on pressure relief valves. Uh, pressure relief valves are typically designed by using a spring. So imagine that you have a spring like this. So this is the original length of this spring. Very nice drawing. Now to so assume that there is a flow coming from this pipe and this ball is kind of stressed or compressed by this spring so we, we compress this spring and kind of put it here like this so it applies a force this way you know that Hooke's law Hooke's find out that um, the force is proportional to the compression of the spring now if you take out that cons proportional sign you get a constant that is called a spring constant. So this piece is a spring constant. Now if you try to find the unit of that is spring constant, you can solve for k which then become f by x. So you can say in the US system it's going to be uh, pound per inch. Now foot would be very large uh, compression for a spring. Um, in the international system, the um, force unit is Newton and the uh, distance is meter, but meter would be huge. It's almost like 3.3 uh, 3 foot is 1 meter. So they use a millimeter on the other hand. So Newton per millimeter. So that's the spring constant. So the amount of force that is applied. Now here is one term that you need to kind of understand this thing is known as initial compression as you can see initially the spring has to be compressed uh, to apply that force so that is called initial compression which is it's not there is no standard for that let's say we use the amount is s so the length or the compression amount is s as uh, some x you can say x either way um, so force then equal to kx um, if we express the initial compression by s it's going to be ks so that's the force applied here now if we know the uh, cross section area of the pipe which is blocked by this ball so let's say that is a so we can calculate the pressure here so we can say if the force is applied f the pressure would be then f by area or you can say ks by a the pressure now this pressure will just balance this force so that's why it's called cracking pressure it will not make any flow it will just produce enough force just to balance this initial compression if you apply some pressure of this mass so that's why it's called cracking pressure if you apply cracking pressure there will be no flow but this ball will be kind of floating so just a little bit more this ball will go up and it start to flow which is in this picture so the ball kind of went from this position so this was the center and then so I said the center was somewhere here and then now it went there so that would be the travel for that ball. Let's say it travel X amount. So the force by that distance would be, so a spring is even more compressed. So that force will be F equal to K S X. So the total force in this condition is going to be the initial compression force. Plus the additional uh, compression to make full flow or kind of free flow something like that so that would be the total force now if you want to calculate the pressure under this condition it's the same thing pressure is equal to f by a you can just say k s initial compression force plus the additional compression force divided by the same area this area is the area of the pipe cross section area of the pipe so these are the equations you need, not really equation, basically the Hooke's law that we use for, um, be careful about these units, they are millimeter inches, kind of messed up.